Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you the Cabo Control Center, a product touted as being the ultimate remote control. And then I'm going to show you why it isn't right now, and it might not ever be. On my CES live stream, a viewer in the chat suggested that Dr. Z's and I go visit the booth of the Cabo Control Center, a product that I had previously never heard of. The only information that I was given was that it was like a Harmony remote, but with a lot more functionality. And having just dealt with my Harmony Hub's local control inexplicably being eliminated, I was a little angry with Logitech and definitely open to a new solution. When we visited the Cavo booth, my eyes lit up and the gears in my head started turning as I learned about the Cavo. It's an extremely dense black box that contains a four device HDMI switch and it has machine vision that allows it to index content on your DVR, search all of your streaming devices and services at once, and seamlessly integrate all of your media. The Cavo is also a powerful universal remote control that can use infrared blasters to control some of your devices and HDMI CEC to control the rest. The Cavo is an incredibly impressive piece of hardware, especially since it only costs $99. I had a great time talking with the Cavo developers at the booth, and I left CES extremely excited to get my hands on one. Fast forward two weeks or so, and my Cavo arrives. The packaging looked great, the build quality appeared to be top notch, and I was ready to transition from my Logitech Harmony Hub to the Cavo Control Center. I spent a few minutes situating the Cavo in its new home and doing some cable management before booting it up. The setup process was straightforward, but also pretty long. At a few different points it warned me that it was going to turn a device off, but it might not be able to turn that device back on. And it was correct two out of three times that it said that. I made it through the setup process without too much issue, but while it was more user friendly than setting up my Harmony remote, it certainly wasn't a simple plug and play device. After finishing the setup process, it sent me to my computer to sign up for a Cavo account. Easy enough, just register online and enter the code on the screen to link the device. And then it sent me to the Plex website to link Plex to Cavo, and again, it integrated pretty seamlessly. Finally, I needed to go to my Amazon Echo app on my phone and download the Cavo skill and link my account. None of these steps were difficult, but at this point it had been nearly 45 minutes since I had taken the Cavo out of the box, and I was starting to get a little bit antsy. So I was relieved when I reached a screen at the end telling me that the setup of my Cavo was done. The welcome screen suggested that I use the Cavo remote to search for some media, so I decided to be nice and give it something pretty easy. My daughter had just been watching The Descendants 2 on my Plex server, so I said, search for Descendants 2. And about four seconds later, it came back with some options for me to watch the movie, which, as I mentioned, is a movie that we own and have on our local Plex server. But inexplicably, the top results tab was for me to rent it from Amazon Prime for $3.99. Now, as an adult, I could easily understand that I should probably try to look elsewhere for the correct option. But my six-year-old probably would have just clicked OK, resulting in either a very unhappy dad when I was charged $4 to watch a movie that we already own, or an unhappy kid when it denied the purchase due to parental controls. So where was the correct result? Well, it turns out I needed to scroll to the very bottom of the list to get to Plex results instead of top results. And this is a total failure in my opinion. If it seems like I'm being too hard on the Cavo, please consider that its main selling point over something like the Harmony Hub was supposed to be the simplification of media consumption. And this seems like pretty much the opposite of simplification. So maybe I was expecting too much. Next, I was just going to test how the Cavo compared to my three-year-old Harmony Hub as a universal remote. Manual switching of devices worked pretty much just as expected, albeit a little bit slower than what I was used to since the Cavo was handling the HDMI switching instead of my audio video receiver. Next up was voice control. How about opening Plex? Open Plex. Hmm, duplex, huh? All right, it was late and I was trying not to be too loud and wake up my wife. Maybe I just needed to enunciate a little bit. Let's try it again. Open Plex. Hey, cool, it worked. How about opening up Netflix? Open Netflix. A web search for Netflix. Uh, that doesn't seem right. I wonder if telling it to turn on the Roku will take it back to the main Roku screen. Turn on Roku. Hmm. Web search for Roku again. Well, fine. Maybe I'll just listen to some music. Honestly, our entertainment system is mostly used to listen to music on our Echo Dot anyways. 
and we only watch TV maybe for an hour or two a day. To do this, I just needed to figure out how to switch my AV receiver to the aux input with this fancy new remote control. Surely somewhere in the menu there's an option to add an extra device to the remote. Mm, nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, well there's got to be some advanced option to then just like learn a new IR command or something. Also no. Okay then. At this point, let's revisit my initial impressions of the Cavo. A long and involved setup process that involved me using a TV, my computer, and my phone. A suggestion to pay to rent a movie that I already owned on my Plex server. Web searches instead of device changes. And finally, the inability to change my AV receiver to aux to listen to music. Leaving this thing attached to my TV would have caused a riot in my house. So I disconnected the Cavo and I put it back in its box. The next day, I sent an email to the marketing rep at Cavo that I had been in contact with, outlining my initial experiences. She set me up with an appointment to speak with a member of the development team to talk about the issues I was having. And what transpired was a super interesting conversation that really pinpoints the Cavo team's vision for this device and why it's probably never going to be the right device for me. First, above all else, the Cavo team is trying to produce a product that's simple to use and doesn't need any troubleshooting. The reason there isn't an option to add extra devices to the AV receiver is that there's too much variation in the way that AV receivers are controlled and they don't want to create a situation where the Cabo can't correctly switch to the input that you select. And while I understand the desire to make a product that works flawlessly when it's in a household where there's no one around to troubleshoot, it seems extremely short-sighted to leave out an advanced menu with some kind of a warning that would allow you to utilize the tremendous amount of potential that this device actually has. For me, I don't mind troubleshooting an edge case every few months if it means the device works the way I need it to the rest of the time. I also think they're kidding themselves a little bit with their market base. I was able to navigate my way through the setup process relatively easily, but I can tell you right now that if this had been my parents setting up this thing, they would have packed it up and sent it back long before finishing the setup process. Right now you're probably thinking to yourself, well sure, but I can just set it up in my parents' house and then they can enjoy it. And I totally agree with you, but that is just not the vision that the Cavo team has for this product. They want it to be simple enough that even the most technophobic people could get it to work. The second point that I addressed was that the search function failed to suggest my Plex server as the top result. And again, the answer that I received was understandable, but also disappointing. Basically, the Cavo handles its Plex searching and results locally, but it does the rest of its cross-platform searches on the Cavo cloud. The reason they don't want to integrate Plex results with the top results is that they're worried that it's going to slow down the overall speed of the voice search and therefore lessen the quality of the user experience. For me, I can't ever think of a time when I would rather have the wrong result one second faster than the correct result. And I really don't see this becoming an issue for their target base anyways, since they probably aren't going to be the type of people that are integrating their own local Plex servers. There's an option buried in the menus to always prioritize Plex results. But all that does is it gives you your Plex results screen first instead of the top results screen. So if your Plex server doesn't have the requested media, you'll still have to scroll down to the top results window to see the rest of the results, which I still don't think is great. The third issue that I brought up was it incorrectly searching for web results instead of just opening the Netflix app or tuning to the Roku. And after talking it through for a little while without any resolution, we determined that it must have been some kind of bug in the software. And that's fine, the Cavo is being actively developed and it should be getting better and better all the time. Unfortunately, this also comes with a monthly subscription fee of $1.99 a month or $49.99 lifetime subscription. Personally, I'd much rather Cavo just scrap the whole subscription thing and charge us $150 for the product up front. But I'm not a professional marketer, so maybe I'm off base. What I do know is that in its current state, I can't recommend the Cavo to anyone. Once the bugs are worked out and some critical updates are made, I think it's going to be an interesting product for the less tech savvy members of the baby boomer generation. That is, of course, given that they can have someone come to their house and help them with the initial setup. However, given the closed off nature of the firmware, the lack of local control, and the complete dependence on the Cavo cloud for advanced functionality, I don't think this is ever going to be an option in my house. It's worth noting that there are actually a couple more issues with the Cavo that I haven't even addressed because they're really not that big of a deal for me, but they might be for you. 
First, the Cabo can't currently control smart TV apps. Since its machine vision engine requires the image to pass through the Cabo via HDMI, that means that if you're watching an app on your smart TV, the Cabo has no idea what's on the screen and therefore can't use its main function. Again, this isn't really an issue for me since my main TV is an LG Google TV that Google killed off in 2015. And in fact, my advice for anyone in the market for a new TV these days is to get one with as few smart features as possible. And then just buy yourself a Roku or a Fire Stick or Apple TV or Chromecast or Nvidia Shield or any of those products that will really do a great job of handling your media. That way, in the future, if you become unhappy with it, you don't need to throw away your whole TV. The last issue is that since the Cabo does processing on all the HDMI signals that come through it, it actually adds about 30 milliseconds of video lag to the input. That means that if you plug your Xbox or PlayStation or Switch into your Cabo and then into your LG OLED TV, you'll experience roughly 31 milliseconds of total video lag. 30 of that from the Cabo and one from the TV. I don't play video games even remotely competitively anymore, so this isn't an issue for me at all, but it's definitely something you should keep in mind. I really don't like doing negative reviews, but I am committed to giving my honest feedback about the products that I feature on this channel. And in all honesty, this one is a no for me. One reason that I can be unbiased is that I don't accept any form of payment for product reviews. And a major reason that I can do this and still sustain the channel is because of my wonderful patrons over at Patreon. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links in the description. If you have questions about the Cabo or you want me to test something out, please let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.